getting hung up on your bag and it's all very great. There's soot on the on the ceiling. Yes. Almost like a missile tube, isn't it? In previous episodes of The Last Nazi Secret, I spent quite some time here at Rapschen in Czechoslovakia. It was an interesting U relocation for the German Air Force production of Me 262s, which were produced here in the tunnels. However, there's more to this place. It was mentioned in several publications after the war that the Germans had a large cyclotron installed here, and in 1946 that the Russians shipped it back to Russia. Also, General Kamla was expected at the nearby Richard Mine, where he had a huge relocation system when he disappeared in 1945 and never officially arrived there. So I wanted to make sure I got to see every part of this system to get an idea of its size and possible use, or alternate uses. Originally here was a textile factory from before the war. And from 1941, this was handed over to the production of the Weser Flugzeugbau from Bremen. Also, a concentration camp was built here as a subcamp from the Flossenburg concentration camp. In early 1944, Siemens began to look into constructing a huge underground area of 82,500 square meters, divided in two sections, A and B, and H. One, which I was able to visit several years ago by a complete chance that the doors were open. The other was after the war used for fuel storage, and that is what I wanted to see today. Here was also six kilometers of narrow gauge rail from the train station. There was a boiler house, transformer station, tunnels for the guard posts, and it was extremely well protected in a narrow groove in the mountain. It was codenamed Sechstein. In May 8, 1945, the system was evacuated. This was several days after Kamla disappeared from history. In 1946, Russian forces began to dismantle the facility. From 47 to 51, it was used as food storage. From 52 to 53, expansions of A, B and C as a storage facility for pioneer ammunition was undertaken by the Czech military. Where after 57 to 62, there was a further expansion of the Plant H that we're going to see today, where a fuel reserve warehouse with 12 huge tanks and a capacity of approximately 7.5 million liters were installed in 2002, and it was taken over by a private entity and now operates a museum in one of the tunnels. And as you all know, there's nothing I enjoy more than crawling through old World War II tunnels in the middle of the night. So, as Misery Seeks Company, I brought a friend with me, a Polish explorer, who have traveled to all the most miserable, dark and dangerous places in the world, and you really should check out her travel blog, Girl on a Trail. She does get around to places that even I would never want to see or visit. However, she has never undertaken the exploration of underground World War II tunnels. So, since she has some really interesting insight in the world, I thought I should so bring her with me. Interesting features here in the mountains. One of them was a very large fuel storage. In fact, it's actually so large it goes under the mountain back towards the main factory. Now, what we have to do in the soon to be darkness is find them. It's the strangest things that I have found in crawling all over these military locations and all these, I mean, here you had concentration camp, prisoners working, you, airplanes and whatever else we could have put in these tunnels. But it's always the most beautiful locations, the most serene and wonderful, quiet nature. It's always gorgeous where all these things happen. I mean, I, I'll give it to the SS. They had a really good sense of location. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm sure that's... Well, actually, you know what? I did hear prisoner accounts mm -hmm. from some of the concentration camp laborers that said one of the, the only good thing they had in life was to wake up to was a beautiful view of this or that. Okay. Okay. And I'm like, 
I just hope for the rest of their lives they weren't associating beautiful views mm -hmm. with the subsequent hard labor. Yeah. But well. seriously, <laughs> it's one of the most sinister little things. I've, I've, I mean, you have all this amazing nature, and the bridge is built that time. I wonder why there was a back entrance. <laughs> Always dress for the occasion. <laughs> Okay, but it's okay there. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, but you know, I think that I will go, go this first way, yes. Yeah, go, yeah. go yes, first, take I the camera and then... Can... No, but... And I'll film your gracious, uh, gracious uh, exit, falling down, entrance. What? It's not that bag. It's hung up on yeah? your bag yeah. and it's all very graceful. Okay. <laughs> I don't go upside down the right way. I told you that way was better. I'm a man, I don't listen. I don't take advice. This is gonna be this is gonna be awesome. Oh this is metal. Oh I thought this was like a plastic trash can. The gracefulness of imminent death. Okay, so so this was the ventilation shaft. And that's the other ventilation with a bunch of electrical on the walls. Well, this certainly looks well over too. Well, you wanted to see my world? Yeah. This is my world. <laughs> I think this is the temperature it's going to stay. Uh -huh. so, I wonder if they ran pipes all the way through here or just used the tunnel as the air flow uh -huh. before the air flow, I guess. I don't yes, know. But you, you, you know, I have never been. Something like that. All the crazy places you have been in your life, and you've never been in an old World yes, War II. Don't worry, <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll change that. I always said, you're not complete as a human being until you crawl through an old <laughs> World War II or possibly Cold War bunker, and here the cement starts. Okay. I mean, it looks very World War II. I actually don't know if they built this for the fuel storage after. I don't think they did. Mm -hmm. I think this was built during the war. But by the time you hear me say this, you will have heard my narration, mm -hmm. and I will have told you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know how it looks like. I same with my blog. <laughs> <laughs> when you see, sometimes when you experience something when you're here, you don't have all the facts. Yes. Then yes. when you finally do the episode, well, now I have the facts. So you heard me say the facts, but at the time I'm recording this, there are things I don't know. So these were for running cables. Mm -hmm. These square stuff was laying on there. And on there, this could have. Actually, this could have come all the way over here. No? No, it didn't. Never mind. I think maybe they had run it all the way across to put the pipes on. I've seen that in some places. But if they had massive amount of fuel, that's why they needed the ventilation. So the fumes won't 
start doing strange things like exploding yes, and stuff. But, but you know, it's so long, yes, it's unbelievable. It's actually insanely long. No? I think this is some 400 meters, mm -hmm. from what I seem to remember. Yes, but no, I, I haven't been in something like that yet, so for me it's long. <laughs> okay. Here's more cement and more cable hangers in the wall. I'm pretty sure these are post-war. They uh -huh. don't look... The World War II German ones were different. This looks like metal, so it probably was. Doesn't mean that the post-war use was different than the wartime use. It's interesting how they cemented some sections and not some others. But why? Why is that? Well, sometimes when you drill through rock, uh, some of the rock are stable, mm -hmm. and some of the some of the rock isn't. This is maybe has a fissure or something, and there's chance of collapse or debris, and they strengthen that by reinforcing it. But now I'm I'm sure the big tunnels are closed, especially now, unless somebody forgot to lock them. But they are really impressive. And there was production in there. And my thought was, there was some rumor that they had a cyclophon set up around here. Mm -hmm. And, well, you have to have somewhat of a clean environment for that. And I thought the other tunnels, they were so clean that I could totally see that. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, yeah, it would Perfect. just look. <laughs> well, I smell fuel, so this might be one of them. Should we go down to the end and then they take these individually on the way back, or should we just go? see some holders for fuel cells. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I really don't know what to expect. Yeah. Except that they put a lot of work into this, and it's pretty damn bomb-proof. Mm -hmm. Which is why during the Cold War they also used these and the others to store fuel, munition, and maybe food. Okay. I could remember the food from a different place. Theoretically, it doesn't really matter. Oh, there's a door on the other end. Interesting. Oh. Hmm. The scrappers have been here. This was wrapped around probably maybe copper wires. Mm -hmm. So. If we ever go to the um, to the National Line forts, mm -hmm. you will see how the scrappers have peeled this off all the pipes, and you walk on a meter of this. This is cool. 
So this is the kind of technical tunnel we have to crawl through in the other one, mm -hmm. another this one. So I'm guessing there would have been a fuel cell in here, or if I didn't know any better, I would think there would have been a generator or something on these. Mm -hmm. Well, wait a minute, if there's ventilation, there would have been a generator to power the ventilators, wouldn't there? So there quite possibly would have been a motor or engine sitting here moving the fuel. Holy, oh, that's no. the inside of one of the fuel cells. Yeah. What is that doing in there? I mean, okay, I know what it's doing in there, but where is, yeah. where is in there? You have your light too, right? Mm -hmm. um, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm curious. So it's inside here in that, mm -hmm. Well, there's got to be access to it yes. other than that little thing. Yes, it was huge. Yes. Yeah. I mean, they didn't just break it in there. There must have been access to it. This was just a, a, an access panel for, I mean, guest service or control or something. But maybe, you know, there is on the other side, yes, another mm -hmm. corridor, so like this. I I think we should continue down this yes. walkway and see how far this gets. Maybe we can walk around the center to get an idea how big this is. Mm -hmm. This is all nicely bricked in. I mean, there must be an access to that thing from our left, or a row of them behind the wall. Mm -hmm. There must. I mean, there must be. Yeah. Saying that was some sort of optimism, expecting there to be. No, there's a, there better be a hallway leading left. There's another. Ooh, there's another one. So. At least, at least there was access to that one. What about the other one? I mean, these scrappers have been cutting the metal of this one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Apparently metal is worth a lot. They steal it from everywhere. Mm -hmm. that's, that's an interesting picture. Yeah, Almost like a missile tube, isn't it? Don't fall over. I don't know if you have longer legs than I do, so you should be able to make it. Mm. Yes, but really, it's unbelievable for me. It's so, so huge. Yes, that... I wouldn't expect. Totally, you'll find the most amazing things hiding underground. Mm. Where the small little exit, and you never knew. Yeah. Just wait till you see the east wall. That's a real thing. 27 kilometers of tunnels. Really? Uh-huh. Oh. They used to run small trains. Okay. Most fun thing is when I do this and I run into people who are doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. That's kind of fun, like, hello, oh, hello. Oh. <laughs> Although I scared the living crap out of a family in Germany. I was three floors down and heard them talk about me. Uh -huh. And 
I was like, I didn't want, I didn't want them to come down and be scared. Uh -huh. So I called them. I said, hello, I'm here, everything's fine. Mm -hmm. they, I could just hear them freak out and run out the door upstairs. I was like, no, it's fine, really. There's a crazy guy down here in the basement. Come on down. <clears throat> I'm like, yeah, okay. You're going to some dark bunker underground. There's some, somebody yelling down there. Uh, yeah. Hello, turn. It almost looks like there's been a soot fire in here on the ceiling. No, from all over. Uh -huh. Here's another one. Here they got the whole, the whole tank out. It's kind of funny they got this tank out first, which is the furthest away. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I guess it's the furthest away. And you can really see when there's soot on the walls, how it absorbs the light. Yeah, there's been been fire or something. Could be, I guess it could be welding. Yes, I mean, I can find it. I mean, yeah, well, I figured you want pictures, don't you? So one, two, three, four. I'm curious. Yeah, oh. yes, I guess. Right. So I guess we'll walk the path and then hopefully we should be able to go to the right and then meet the hallway down there mm -hmm. that we were on, I'm guessing. I hope you're right. <laughs> well, I mean, the worst thing that happens is we go there the same way back. It's the same thing as in the World War II forts, uh, in the Maginot Line forts, okay. and the late World War I forts. They had, they brought in the same, these huge fuel containers, metal, and collect it, put them together in sections, mm -hmm. like they did here, because, okay. I mean, you can't bring them in in one piece. So this was. The technology very much is the same, with some, with some variations. But mm -hmm. <coughs> you need <coughs> you need the you to build bunkers. You need roughly the same thing. You need you know ventilation, um, protection. Uh, you need to be water resistant, water drainage, toilet facilities, uh, kitchen cooking. And if it's a fighting place, overpressure in case the enemy uses gas. And of course, uh, munition in, you need emergency exits. A lot of them, they had to generally had the same, I mean, the concepts are all the same as if you go all the way back to the medieval fortresses mm -hmm. and castles, you roughly, you sort of follow the evolution. The only thing that really changed from uh, World War One to World War Two, or from Franco-Prussian War to World War Two, is that the forts became smaller and more separated. Okay. Because, I mean, the, the old forts from the 19th century, they were centralized, where everything was put in a small location, roughly, 
with the cannons, the munitions and everything. Mm -hmm. And the moment something got hit with a bomb, everything was destroyed. Mm -hmm. World War II, you had a whole lot of small bunkers separated. So if one was destroyed, mm -hmm. the others weren't. Mm -hmm. What is this? All right, well, we all know how, we all know how the Navy does it. Yeah, it's solid, it's not going anywhere. Maybe I am, but. <laughs> so, somebody forget. It's the military insignia. I mean, I have, I found a lot of Cold War clothing. I even found a little bit, this is more modern. Um, you find stuff. Huh. There's an ass of a tank. Yeah. Huh. Easier to go up this way. Oh, you can really smell the, the diesel or the oil. So, all right. Have the tank. And this is the supply pipe. And that's the ventilation pipe, and that one that feeds to the tank uh, disappears in the wall. There's the ventilation. The ventilation follows the entire location, but this one disappears in this wall, so it possibly goes up. Up, upstairs, there may, might be a fueling. I mean, they would put the fuel in here somehow, so there might be an access on top of this mountain. Okay. Just up. <laughs> this is a big thing. <laughs> if it wasn't for the graffiti, I could really have done without the graffiti. <laughs> yes, but it's amazing. It's a little bit like walking into a submarine. Yeah. So that's check, isn't it? The writing. <coughs> oh, that's Russian. Yes, it's Russian. That is Russian. Maybe if I look at it before I ask stupid questions. So this was, that's interesting because the Czechs always said they sort of maintained some sort of independence. Mm -hmm. But the Russian writing, yeah. I guess the Russians were here. I mean, the, uh, I got very much in trouble with a Polish Special Forces General. A Polish? Yes. Uh -huh. Why? Because I said that the effort to destroy uh, part of the Fürstenstein underground, the bunkers around it, was done by Russian soldiers. Mm -hmm. It was done by Polish soldiers. And, but, obvious mistake, mistake. Uh, and I actually wrote him and apologized and corrected it. But the question I always had when it came to Eastern Bloc countries under the Soviet influence, how much independence did the countries really have? Mm -hmm. I mean, was it so the Polish could just go do whatever they wanted? Or did they not have, did the Russians not have the final say? Mm -hmm. And. I think that's also a question that needs to be sort of addressed. Is I always was curious about how much the the various Eastern Bloc countries actually had of independence, mm -hmm. you know, military and so on. But that's a different different episode. Yes, but I think in general, Ooh. Polish generals are really sensitive. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, I, I get it. It's uh, it it was actually a Google translation error, because I only ha I had the information from a third-hand website. I tried to get it translated, mm -hmm. and it came back with something that read out as, you know, Polish soldiers or Russians or as Russian soldiers, or holy shit, we're outside. Oh, the hell are we outside? Okay, so, so, so that's why there were these parts. I 
pretty sure that's the other entrance there. I think I will have to extend my holiday because I want to see everything, yes? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is easier than the other way, but okay, it's not as pretty. Yes. There's a hallway on the other side of this wall yeah. now, yes. But you know, that entrance was really interesting for me. I like such places, yes, just, you know. Well, good, because we're coming through it again in a second. <laughs> yes, yes. Right. It's, it's more interesting, yes, and, and you feel this exploration, adventure, you know. <laughs> well, now we will fast forward back to where we turned off. See you in a minute. Now, if I wasn't all mistaken, then that pipe sitting right there is the one that the fuel would come in. So that might connect to the pipe that used to be right there. Okay, so the fuel filling up pipe does come down all the way through. Now, I'm thinking that if we walk this way, mm -hmm. actually let's just walk this way and then find out what I'm thinking. <laughs> the best way of doing things is not planning them, just doing them. I'll find out what I'm thinking at the end of this hallway. Okay. And maybe I'll find out I didn't think it at all. Hmm. Okay, the thought I thought I had, I don't think I had it anyway. Wait, is that, am I seeing outside? Yes, yes. So, 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 so there is I am seeing outside. Okay. Well, that still doesn't tell me where that other hallway went. So... Alrighty. So what was in there? This was another... Oh, this was another one of those rooms in between. Yeah. So this has to come out on the other side of the tanks. Mm -hmm. It has to. Okay. Look at the cables in the ground. Um, yeah. hmm. That's a lot of electricity for a place that stores fuel. Just saying. These are big things. Mm -hmm. So coming down here, there's that. Okay, we'll do that again. So I can, can we focus please? Thank you. This thing. I'm just curious. There was one place in an old Cold War, uh, well, uh, West Wall bunker turned into a Cold War NATO headquarters mm -hmm. where it was so big inside. I got really well turned around where. It, where I was going through all these hallways and there was a point where I stopped and said, I have no idea where I am. Uh -huh. okay. I mean, you, usually, you know, you can stand in these things and I can always point to the, to the exit. Mm -hmm. There was a point when I stood in there, a girl like, I actually don't know where the exit is. Uh -huh. Yes, but for, for example, I have a problem when, I, uh, when I'm interested suddenly about something, yes, and then I go and don't think about the way, you know, just uh, forget, you know, so I remember the way. <laughs> huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, 
Yeah, well, I mean, well, uh, when you see something interesting and then another interesting thing and then another, and suddenly yeah. you realize yes that that you don't know where you are. I mean. I mean, some of the crazy places you go to. I, uh... yeah, so, so what is the what is the scariest thing that ever happened on any of your explorations? Scariest? Yeah. I mean, I don't think it's that, 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 that I, I, I had some, some kind of scary. Maybe you go to every war-torn, terrorist-run, crazy country in the world. Something crazy. So, uh, uh, okay, so, so okay, crazy I, I then. Was, I, I was a little bit terrified when, when, when I was close to this. Gaza Stripe, uh, when there was this bombardment, yes? In and, where? Uh, in Israel, it was, and yeah. oh, it yeah. was in 2019. And you know, there, there, there was some kind of a bomb which, which exploded, I don't know, 15 kilometers, yes, from, from you know, from my position. So, okay, so, so, so then it was, you know, a little bit scary, yes? What, 15 kilometers away? Yes, yes, because it was on the territory of Israel. Yeah. Yes, that the, uh, there was that from Gaza Strike, they, you know, uh, just launched some, yeah. some bombs, yes, and one, uh, you know, landed in Israel. But, uh, you know, in, in, in general, I, I believed in this, uh, you know, uh, this Iron Dome in Israel. Yes. Well, <laughs> you know, look, there's an amazing amount of electricity on the walls in this place. Yes, yes. There is a yes. stupid amount of cables just for a place yes, sir. running oil. And I'm just saying, this is ventilation, but <laughs> these doors, I don't see what they would be. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but yeah, I mean, you go to places where there is. Terrorism and attacks and war. I mean, this is sort of kind of what you. Ah, uh, okay. Well, so outside it's, again. Yes, yes. It's amazing. But I mean, so where's the other thing? Yeah. All right, I guess we're. Oh, oh, okay. I know what that looks like on the outside. I guess. Yeah. That's that's just strange. They're so so deep in here. Mm -hmm. And then you have an exit an exit yes. right here. Yes, but, but, uh, but you know, as regards some some dangerous situation, it doesn't look like that when you go, for example, to Transnistria or uh, Nagorno-Karabakh, that there is, uh, you know, a lot of dangerous place, something like that. We, the, 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 there's nothing like, yes? People live here, you know, in normal life, yes? So, so you know, of course, uh, close to them, Border, you can see Russian tanks, yes, and so on, yes, that, that's weird. But in general, there is no light. Yeah, I mean, all right. Yeah, I mean that that's that's true. And if it, just because the war is in country, uh, just because a country is at war, doesn't mean that it's war had war everywhere. Yes. Uh, it's just like you see Ukraine now, where you have right now the eastern parts mm -hmm. where all the fighting is and then you have missiles coming overhead yes and but it's not the whole country is not a war zone mm -hmm. and this is a big country so yes that's right and mm -hmm. but i think for most of those countries especially some of the ones that you've visited i would be far more worried about criminals than mm -hmm. any kind of domestic terrorists or, or external war threat, mm -hmm. because okay. I think, <clears throat> because for you as an individual in some of these places, mm -hmm. I would see the, the criminals, the criminal element, as a bigger threat. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yes. So, 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 for example, the weirdest place for me was this Transnistria. Yes. So Russians were were going to attack Ukraine. Yes, from there. Because it's so, some kind of territory of Moldova, yes, but in, in general it's Russian. So it's weird place. It's really weird place because the, the, there is no, you know, Western business. There is just one company. It's called Sheriff, 
and for me it's one big place to money laundering and all of the stuff yes yeah. which uh, Russians can do there you know freely and uh, on the other hand it's a good place for them good good strategic place yes just to you know help Ukraine uh, so when were you there? Mm -hmm. Yes. When, when were you there? Uh, when? In uh, oh, I think it was three years ago, something like that. So there were still Russian tanks in the in the yes, area three yes, years ago. Be, be, because you know uh, they are let's say self-appointed country. Yes. No, no, nobody recognizes them. Yes. But uh, you know they are supported uh, by Russia, yes. So 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 like Abkhazia in Georgia, yes. So 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 Russian do this way, yes. Just you know put you know some so, 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 some of the forces, yes, in some places, and to uh, you know keep everything, you know. Yeah. It's, it's the uh, uh, politics, yes. So what is the official territory recognized as what part of what country does Transnistria originally belong to? Uh, Moldova. Moldova. Yes, yes. But you know, uh, Moldova is the, the poorest country yeah, in the world. Yes. So, well, they, they can't so, pick a fight with Russia over territory. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yes, but they, as you know, yeah. in general they wanted to be in Europe, yes, but because of this territory, there is no chance for this. All right, now we know where we are. Okay, so now we come full circle. Yes, but uh, you know, it was so weird place, yes, uh, because, uh, uh, for example, you know, uh, everywhere there were landing statues, yes, this Russian tanks, yes, so it was something. And also, there are three embassies, yes, Abkhazia, another self-appointed country, Nagorno Karabakh, and, and uh, uh, the Ossetia, I think it's Ossetia also, yes, so... So you can only be a self-appointed country if you have a big power backing you. Yeah, yeah, Basically. that's right. So is this, was this a Soviet initiative? to sort of create these countries as buffers? <clears throat> no, uh, you know, there were some separatist movements, yes, and just Russia uh, supported them, yes? Mm -hmm. So... Because I found no... <clears throat> I found that no revolution or annexation or civil war or... Nothing happens by accident. Mm -hmm. There are no grassroots movements that spring up and take over a country. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen. There's always someone that's funding them, fueling them, yeah. inciting them. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> or sent them there. Yes, especially in such places. Yes, and it's really, it's really good place for Russia. Just, uh, you know, keep control over, you know. Yeah. So the same with Abkhazia, yes, uh, also in Nagorno Karabakh, the same. Hmm. Well, I mean. <coughs> Let's see, if I want my own country, I have to find someone who wants to back it. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, but for this Transnistria, uh, yeah, there was also a scandal connected with Poland. Yeah? Shocking. And it's really interesting. Oh, do tell. Because they uh, had previously some kind of currency, and this currency looked like um, so, so, some kind of plastic tokens, you know, like, uh, like to, so, some kind of a game. And. Uh, you know, it turned out that it was uh, pro produced in Poland. Uh -huh. Yes, and uh, when uh, you know the press uh, found about it, so there was a big scandal in Poland. 
how our you know uh, government can produce something like that. Yes, for, the for, 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 uh, for, uh, for the territory. Yes, which is controlled by Russia. Uh -huh. Yes, so so they say that. Uh, oh no, uh, uh, we uh, knew that it was uh, so, so something like for collection or something like that. Yes. But <laughs> <laughs> so the government actually knew it was. A yes, yes, that, uh, uh, that's right. And, uh, you know, at home I uh, have this you know, currency, yes, and it look, looks great, yes. <laughs> it's really funny, yes, because really colorful, yes, and, yeah. Oh, you got to love that. <laughs> now, you'll notice when you walk back from places like this, it always, the walk back is always shorter. Yes, yes, that's right. But uh, uh, the same in the mountains. Yeah. This is where, why didn't we just walk out the damn door? All right, <laughs> fine. Some things to be said for forests at night on the other side of the complex. We're looking for another entrance to the other fuel storages. And we came across this first, which I'm pretty sure is not what I'm looking for. But I don't know what it is. And the door is open. So... I don't know how other to interpret that, but feel invited. I mean, right? It does look pretty much like this is it. Okay. Now, if I were to guess, I'll say there used to be a hole there with a pipe in it. I'm just guessing. So the fuel tanks might be on the other side of this. But there's also the big tunnels. They have to be closed at this time of night. Sometimes time gets away when you do doing these things and you just end up in the middle of the night walking around in the woods. What could possibly go wrong? I mean, seriously, doing this at night, I thought I was coming to the location where I was before. Mm -hmm. And here's the guard shack all of a sudden standing, which means we're on the right path. And I, there's the factory. Mm -hmm. Now I know we are, where, you guys can't see this because it's dark as a bat's arse. But I haven't seen that before. But now I know where we are. So we're probably going up there. For those of you who missed the main episode from here and the main production tunnel system from the war, I wanted to show you these. And here, seeing this space, you can really imagine how jets and plane parts, delicate small pieces, could be produced safely in here. And I will say that if there's any truth to the 1946 CIC report that a cyclotron was installed here in the area, I would believe it. These tunnels are huge, they're clean, there was a power plant nearby, and I have rarely seen a more suitable place for that kind of research. This looks a lot more like a building I would see outside a production facility like this. And here you would have had this generator would be sitting here. Probably, I would imagine you also have compressors. A lot of technical on the walls. Technicals in here. Ventilation. More generators, compressors, technical, air. So this would literally be the support building for the work in the tunnel. Although I would imagine this certainly would also be machinery in the tunnel and I would imagine there will be power running to it from the outside as well. This is looks this is a ventilation or air. I think this is where they would pull the air in. And this metal door type thing. I 
I'm not going to say the building looks reinforced. It just looks like a strong, well-built, purpose-built building, not like a guardhouse, but like a work building. And you look at how the glasses would have been inserted. And this was well-produced. They did not cut any corners here. Not at all. This is so not what I had expected. This is a huge underground production facility. It's big enough for them to do car scenes, racing scenes driving through here. This is not unsafe, this is not unstable. And it's big enough for a car chase. Maybe this is a lot more than I thought. See the lights? That looks, well, it's been rewired, but it looks original. And this is probably where this is bricked up, but if you look at this whole thing, oh, damn. Yeah, this is bricked up. Not very much. This is a section that has been bricked up after the war. You see how these bricks don't fit in. So there was something in there. And you see that cut out. That was probably a rail for a crane. Something. And when I look at the side, there are indents on the right side all the way down that are sections or tunnels that's been bricked up. And somebody had the idea of looking through there. Yeah. Wow. And I came right on the right day where the damn tunnels are actually open. See a lot of the side tunnels. Here's another side tunnel. This is absolutely amazing. I did not expect anything this big. I absolutely did not. I expected something smaller. The tunnels like we usually see just coming from the Unicell tunnels, which were nothing compared to this. This would have taken a rather significant workforce to have accomplished. This is worthy of Jorge Dries' tunnels. In fact, these are bigger and cleaner, flat floor. And of course, this was break up as well. Damn. This could just have been 
where they were. Oh no, no, there's a tunnel in there too. This is absolutely enormous. This is the biggest underground factory site I have been in. And I thought this was just supposed to be a smaller production facility, something that would facilitate. Smaller production, production of auxiliary parts of aircrafts. more. You could build entire aircraft in here. And of course they picked it up in a very interesting manner, I will say. But on the other side of this is more. See the air vents are still there. This is not what I expected. I see the original lights up here. And again, I don't know why I'm whispering. I'm, I would say I'm alone in here, but I'm really not. But I'm also not hearing any cars, so they haven't started doing their driving yet. this all in because this is just this is stupidly staggering there's another here's the first first tunnel I saw as I came in and you see the archways everything is just Detailed, well produced. It is well put together, it is no rush, it is safe and dry. I, I honestly do not know what to feel. This is, <laughs> I don't like to use the word overwhelming, but this is absolutely staggering. Absolutely amazing. Dear Lord. And this is the another entrance. So this is the entrance on the other side of that wall where the ventilation pipes come out of. And I will say they do look somewhat original. Look at everything up there.
that the bricks are new. So if you look at the bricks, this is not a brick. This is a metal. This is a metal rail. A lighter weight metal rail. Probably from the time of the war. See a hole in the wall there. I don't know if it's big enough for me. It is a hole in the wall. It is definitely big enough for me. All of a sudden you can't hear. I'm just on the outside of this seal that they closed at the end of this tunnel and somebody broke through it eventually, of course. But I can't hear the generator anymore. It is so peaceful and quiet in here now. Option held a lot more secrets than what I was aware of. It's not bricked off, that's another tunnel. That's hard to say, it could be bricked off. But it looks like it could also be another tunnel. Of all the tunnels I've been in, this is by far the one where I feel the safest. And here's some construction inside. a reinforcement or what it is. Don't know what any of this is, but I'm thinking these are tunnels that are not yet complete. So let's take the smallest one. Of course, everything would have been dug out of here, pulled out. But there could be miles of tunnels down here, easily. Again, I, I'm. I, I don't know what to say. I'm just taking you with me on this journey, and you know God loves historians, because it was a complete gamble yesterday where I said I'm going to come here. I was toss up was about either I was going to go to Gusen or I was going to go to here, and it was a toss of the dime last night. All right, couldn't meet the guy in Goosen until for a few days from now. Came here instead. I figure I'm going to Pilsen. This is roughly on the way. It was a complete coincidence that I came here today, right on the day where someone is filming a movie in here. So the guard let me in. I wish I could buy that guy lunch or something. But these are the tunnels that were, from what I can tell, not finished, obviously. But they were still expanding this. They were expanding this to look like the enormous finished complex outside. on the other side of this. So what is this? That's blocked 
dropped off, but... Yeah, it looks recent. See all the scrape marks? The tool marks in here. Pickaxes, hacks, whatever you could find. Well, they had tools, certainly. I could see why this will be safe from bombing from allies until, until the Russians eventually got too close. find that guy and thank him a lot because it's a hollow tube I thought it was one of the tools there for a minute I would imagine everything used for tooling had been removed by the Russians when they got here that is well the MO This is still amazing, absolutely amazing to see. Alright, I'll go back out in the main tunnels, say thank you to my guide. I mean, the sheer size of this is just staggering. It is absolutely staggering. And you see the heavy beams where you would more than likely have cranes to lift things, have cranes moving parts around. And that would have been lighting fixtures on one side and then holders for equipment I'm imagining on the other It's the coincidence, the coincidence of being here on the very one day where the gates wouldn't be locked at the time when they're not filming, so I wouldn't be in here getting run over. This is the kind of coincidence that makes me do what I want to do. On the news. That. <laughs> and then there's that. Oh, that 20 meters up. See more electronics on the walls. Ah, uh, this was the best, best part of the week. You 
Okay. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? Mario. 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 Tino. Ciao. Ciao. Italiano? No, no, no. <laughs> I'm Slovak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought the man Mario was Italian. Yeah. <laughs> Fence posts along the road. And I don't think they were there to ensure people didn't fall in the little river here. It is, after all, just a little lake. So you had what you always need. You have security, you have forced labor, you have underground tunnels. Everything you need to produce material underground. What an amazing surprise. So, here, house used to be looks like two doors window. There's nothing in here. It's just one room. Had electrical paneling something sitting up there. Built into what looks like the stone from the mine, which makes perfect sense. You would build out of what you pulled out of the mountain. You see the tool marks on the stones of various kinds. Again, probably generator room, work room. That's the original textile factory. And here's another one of something. What is this? I think that would be a bathroom. Just another little room again where somebody pulled in a couch. But little indents and holes in the walls, set up for electrical, clawed out the same way. And with a steel door. Another steel door. And come out to the factory. Have the textile factory there. You know it wasn't just a textile factory, because there are guard houses. Now, of all the World War II tunnels I have seen built by the Germans for research in underground factories and manufacturing, if I was ever going to stick anything electronic, nuclear, if I was going to put a particle accelerator into any tunnels I've seen, the one here at Rapstein would be it. It is dry, it is well built, extremely well built, it is secure. Now somehow I sense we're not finished here in this area, not yet. And I hope that one day I'll be able to visit the Russian archives and find out exactly what it was they found here. Until then, I'll keep visiting to try to unlock some of the mysteries and hidden places in the mountains around here. Behind me is Vanna von Braun's first test stand. Down the road is Diebnus nuclear reactor. Over there is the Maginot Line and all its amazing forts. I'm visiting them all and I'm bringing them to you. So I really appreciate you like, follow and share what I'm doing trying to document all these important historical locations. And if you feel like you want to watch more pictures or documents that are used for these, go to lostbattlefields.com. And if you feel like helping me out with my travels, because gasoline and travel and air for you is expensive, my PayPal is there, protectionserviceint.com. You are more than welcome, but you don't have to. I appreciate all your support and all your help, and I love seeing these locations, and I love bringing them to you.